Some picks were definitely more worthwhile than others. It's not a name we expected to hear. Yeah, I had him in the first round. I thought he would go in the first round, but I think this is a bit high. With this year's NFL Draft in the books, it's time for our annual look at the five worst and the five best value picks of this year's class. Worst. Jameer Gibbs There are two main reasons that any GM should ask himself before he makes a draft choice. Number one, is this a position of need? And number two, are we getting good value with this pick? In the case of the Detroit Lions and their number 12 selection, Jameer Gibbs, the answer would be no to both questions. Sorry if it's a bit harsh, but hey, it's the reality of the situation. Gibbs doesn't fit a roster need, because the Lions already have ex-Chicago Bear David Montgomery, who they signed in free agency during the offseason. He's got four straight 800-yard seasons on his resume, and let's not forget that, at the time, they still had DeAndre Swift on their roster as well. And secondly, who had Gibbs being a top 20 pick, let alone 12th overall. The Lions could have easily traded down and nabbed Gibbs late in the first or early in the second round. Seriously, who else was trying to get Gibbs that early in the draft? Taking a running back that early is always risky business, especially when he's not even considered to be capable of taking on a workhorse role, which is the case with Gibbs, who projects to be more of a change of pace slash receiving back with big play capabilities. It's moves like this that remind us why they have been rebuilding since 1957. Best, Will Levis. Consider it the most shocking draft fall since Aaron Rodgers in 2005. Kentucky QB Will Levis was considered by many to be a top 5 selection. Or at least a top 10 pick according to countless mock drafts leading up to the actual event in Kansas City. But the ex-Wildcat star went undrafted in round 1, which was utterly shocking given his talent level and the fact that several teams could really use a potential franchise quarterback right about now. The Tennessee Titans aren't complaining about how things worked out though. They traded up with the Arizona Cardinals for the number 33 selection and took Levis, putting them in a great spot to transition into a new era next year. 2023 is most certainly it for Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee. He is 35, injury prone, and entering the final year of his contract. Levis probably will benefit from sitting behind Tannehill for a year before taking over the reins, so he truly is in a good position here. Levis has the slick arm and all-world ability to be a franchise QB in the Music City. Mike Vrabel should have no issue unlocking his potential when it's the young man's time to shine. If the Kentucky sensation comes as advertised, well, this will be one of the biggest draft coups we've seen in recent memory. You don't find franchise QBs after day one very often after all. Worst, Jack Campbell. Sorry to pick on the Lions again, but, you know, they're just kind of asking for it with yet another questionable selection. With the 18th pick, the Detroit Lions select Jack Campbell. He's too big. He's too... <laughs> what? I don't love that. I don't like that pick. No. We seriously didn't come across a single NFL expert who had Campbell going in the first round. So, of course, the Lions had to go way off the board and take a guy they could have likely landed by trading down. Second, the Lions already have a promising linebacker in Malcolm Rodriguez, who showed signs of stardom last year. The defensive line and the secondary were much bigger needs, and Campbell doesn't exactly look NFL ready. So, a team in good position to steal the wide-open NFC North decided to go off off the board with its two first round picks, both of whom they could have landed much later in the draft had they just traded down. Jeez, just when you think the Lions are starting to do things the right way, they go and do something like this. Best, Christian Gonzalez. Look, we know the New England Patriots haven't been the same juggernaut since losing Tom Brady in 2020, but 31 other teams should know that it is never, ever a good idea to let the best head coach of all time steal a guy who should have been a top 10 pick. After Davin Witherspoon, Oregon's Christian Gonzalez was widely considered the best quarterback prospect in this class. He also should have just been a top 10 pick. I mean, the Falcons and Raiders both could have used him. But somehow, he fell to the New England Patriots in the 17th spot. Now, here's what's especially funny about all this. The Patriots actually traded down three spots with the Pittsburgh Steelers and still came away with Gonzalez. Gosh, isn't it just great being Bill Belichick? Gonzalez has all the tools that Belichick's other great shutdown corners have had. We're talking guys like Ty Law, Daryl Rivas, Malcolm Butler, and Stephon Gilmore. Gonzalez has the size at 6'2 and 201 pounds, and he also has the range, speed, and hands. The Pats already have a top five secondary with Jack 
Jones, Jonathan Jones, and Kyle Duggar leading the way. And now, they had a guy that could very soon be in the running for the NFL's top cornerback. Worst. Will McDonald the Fool. This isn't a knock against McDonald, who, based on his talent level, certainly deserved to be a first round selection. The New York Jets used the number 15 selection on the Iowa State defensive end. And look, we understand the Jets appreciate his skill set and all, but with Quinnen Williams, John Franklin Myers, Carl Lawson, and 2022 first rounder Jermaine Johnson leading that defensive line, the Jets really don't need another pass rusher. They could have used another offensive lineman like Osiris Torrance, Anton Harrison, or Cody Mock. I mean, you just completed a trade for all-world quarterback Aaron Rodgers, so shouldn't the next priority be to give him the best protection group possible? Asking a 38-year-old Dwayne Brown and injury-prone Mackie Becton to fill out your starting offensive tackle positions is certainly interesting. Good luck out there, A-Rod. You're gonna need it. Best, Roderick Jones. The Steelers had one last pressing need coming into the draft, and that was one more rock-solid offensive lineman to protect Kenny Pickett. The Steelers completed a deal with the rival Patriots to move up into the number 14 spot, where they selected Georgia Bulldogs defensive tackle Broderick Jones. So there it is. Pittsburgh has its long-term blindside protector for their franchise QB. Per Pro Football Focus, Jones allowed zero sacks in his final season at Georgia and only seven hurries and 470 pass-blocking snaps. Jones is everything the Steelers needed to complete a promising-looking offensive group. You think Pickett and star running back Najee Harris are smiling right now? I certainly do. Worst. Motsy Smith. Defensive line was not exactly an area of need for the Dallas Cowboys, yet Jerry Jones surprisingly decided to use the number 26 pick on Michigan defensive tackle Motsy Smith. Dallas already had Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, Dorian Armstrong Jr., and the promising Osa Odighizua to round out their D-line. So where does Smith fit here, and who is he going to eventually replace for snaps? The Cowboys should have looked to the secondary or even tight end. Notre Dame's Michael Mayer would have been the perfect replacement for Dalton Schultz. Even Alabama safety Brian Branch would have been a coup in the number 26 spot. Dallas just added another unnecessary luxury to one of the strongest areas of their roster, and Smith was quite a reach in the first round. Again, the Cowboys could have traded down and snagged him on day two if they really wanted. This was not their best use of their resources, and it's hard to project how Smith will immediately help a team that is in win-now mode. Best, Brian Branch. Speaking of Branch, and yes, Rejoice Lions fans, we were highly critical of the Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell picks earlier in this video, but let me tell you, we have zero room for negative talk about the Brian Branch selection. The do-it-all American defensive back was supposed to be a day one pick. Incredibly, he wasn't even an early round two pick. The 2020 national champion finally heard his name called by the Lions in round two at number 45 overall. Though he's listed as a safety, Branch can also play cornerback, and as evidenced by his three sacks for the Crimson Tide in 2020, 23, Branch can also be deployed as a pass rusher. Dan Campbell will absolutely love that versatility. Branch, who excels in coverage, is also a quality playmaker on the ball, having recorded 23 pass defenses over his three years at Alabama. Detroit signed veteran corners Emmanuel Mosley, Cameron Sutton, and fellow versatile safety CJ Gardner-Johnson in free agency. And now they have Branch to shore up the remaining issues in the secondary. Lions fans are gonna love Branch right away. Just you watch. Worst. B. John Robinson. Look, we know Robinson is the best running back prospect since Saquon Barkley, but folks, the running back position is a devaluing one. Look at every Super Bowl champion of the past 15 or so years. How many of them actually had a true elite running back? They simply aren't needed to win in this league anymore. Teams especially do not need two good running backs. The Atlanta Falcons found a 1,000-yard rusher in Tyler Algier, who by the way was a fifth-round pick in 2022. And yet, the Falcons, with a plethora of other roster needs, use the number 8 pick on Robinson. Where is the logic in this? Algier is a stud and a do-it-all weapon. Cordero Patterson is the perfect change of pace option right behind him. Why didn't Atlanta take Will Levis with this pick? Even if they believe Desmond Ritter is the answer at QB, how about some help on that atrocious front 7 or that lackluster secondary? We have no doubt that Robinson will flourish in the NFL, but someone like Christian Gonzalez, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, or even Miles Murphy would have made a lot more sense here. 
Best, Nolan Smith. The Philadelphia Eagles got great value at number 9 when they picked up Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter. Sure, the off-the-field issues can't be ignored, but from a pure football standpoint, he was once viewed as the number one prospect in this class, and the defending NFC champs got him ninth overall. What's even crazier, though, is that Carter might not even end up being the best pick by Eagles GM Howie Roseman in this year's draft. Instead, it just might be his Georgia teammate, linebacker Nolan Smith. He's another guy who many thought would be a top 15 pick, yet Smith didn't go until number 30 overall to the 2022 runner-ups. Smith was a key cog in the Bulldogs squad that won back-to-back -back national championships. The 6'3", 235-pound linebacker did it all for Georgia as a pass rusher, run stopper, and open field tackler. Adding more youth to a front seven with aging stars like Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox was a necessity for Roseman, and he addressed that big time by taking Carter and Smith with the team's first two picks. So, the Eagles linebacker core now consists of Smith, sack specialist Hassan Reddick, and another ex-Bulldog dog into Kobe Dean, whom the Eagles landed in round three a year ago. Is that not a scary thought for the rest of the league? Philly's defense is absolutely loaded from top to bottom. It is silly that the other teams let the rich get even richer by allowing Smith to fall into Philly's hands. But which do you think was the best pick of the 2023 NFL Draft? And which one do you think was the worst? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. Nay, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.